Hi, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. I appreciate you stopping by and hope you enjoy my video. Today I am creating a sage green flower, painting it on a bridal hanger, and then complimentary wine glasses. And just a very quick and simple pattern. I used to paint this one quite often when I first started doing painted glass and so I thought maybe I would just go ahead and show you this pattern today. Again, it's just very quick and easy. I am using Sage Folk Art Enamel. All the paints that I'm using are actually Folk Art Enamel paints. And the colors are Sage, Wicker White, uh, Berry Wine, and then I would typically use Thicket, but I don't have Thicket so I actually mix my own which is probably a little bit darker than what you would typically think of Thicket being. And then I also use Forest Moss for basically with my leaves I use the my mixture that's in place of the Thicket and then the Forest Moss. I like those combinations. I used to do the Thicket with the white or Thicket with the Sunflower and then one day I decided to give it a try uh, with this forest moss and I really like the combination so I've pretty much stuck with that. But if you like a different combination, different colors, you know, again, it's your project. Do it how you want to do it. So what I'm going to start off first is to do the wicker white and the sage green. So I'm double loading my paintbrush. And I am going to start off just doing the, the first bigger lily, I guess is what this would be a version of. It's kind of like my own, my own creation really. And I just kind of wiggle, put the brush down, wiggle, and then come back. Hope you can see that okay. Kind of happy to be back making videos again. I've had a little bit of a time frame where I haven't been making them just have been too busy too and I really want to keep at it. So I just go around. You can do five or six floral petals and if you want to make the paint a little bit thicker just go back over it as you're painting. I have a lot of questions for people about how my paint looks so opaque compared to what they do. And I do put it on pretty thick but you have to be careful too that you don't put it on too thick because the paint can bubble when you're baking it. So you do want to be careful not to do it too thickly or you'll, you'll find bubbles in the paint. And they're not uh, ones that will go away either. So I'm just going to do five petals. And I've painted for so long that I've pretty much, I kind of use a combination of a one stroke kind of uh, flow with the paintbrush and then my own my own take on it and it's easy to if you want to correct something like say I have more of a space here between this flower than I really would like to have I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in a little bit more and you can always go around it again if you want you know if you like your flowers to be the petals to be layered a certain way because I'm changing that by going over it as you can see and then you can just go over it again if you want. It's really up to you. I guess that I, I don't really like things that have a lot of rules to it. I like to just kind of do my own thing and create whatever it ends up being when it's done. If that makes sense to you. All right. So then what I'm going to do is what I like to do when I was doing these the painted glasses quite often. I would do the main flower and then just do kind of some just like little buds that come off from the, the main flower. And if you want to do something you know where it's different, you know that's fine. This is just something to give you an idea of what can be done. And again I'm just doing just a slight little wiggle. I like to keep my paintbrush fairly cleaned off. Some people say, well, you don't have to clean your paintbrush off it when you're painting. I like to do that. I'm not a big fan of having, I think I have enough paint on the brush as it is. 
So now I'll flip it back and I'll go this direction with it. Just kind of do those petals. So I'm just kind of doing a slight little wiggle up and back. And like I said, when you want to take your time a little bit more, it can be a lot neater. I'm just trying to do this quickly to show you. I don't want my video to be two hours long. And one thing nice about painting on glass is the fact that you can turn the glass. Unlike if you're working on a wall, it's difficult to can't turn a wall. Pretty much have to turn your hands and and do it the best you can. Okay. Okay, so now that I've got the petals, the little buds and stuff on either side, I'm going to go ahead and put another, a bigger flower in. So it doesn't really matter. There's really not a front and a back of the glass. It's a design that will be all over the glass. And I'm sorry, hopefully you can you can see this. I'm trying to use a light now that I'm using for my photography to help brighten up the photos a little bit better. I'm hoping to eventually create an actual space to do my videos so I don't have to try to fit something in, you know, on my actual workspace or whatnot. And the thing of it is with this flower, again, it's just kind of a made up flower. If I want to fill that space, then I'm thinking maybe I'm just going to go ahead and add a, a sixth petal in there, which is fine. Because the thing of it is, you're going to be painting uh, some leaves. So you can actually fill in some of the spaces with leaves. Now, this one. I I think on the sample one that I just did, it actually has two sets of buds going each direction for each flower. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and add another bud. I can actually do it out here if I want. They don't have to be in the same spot. They can just be in, in random places. Each glass doesn't have to be identically done. Matter of fact, for, for a lot of people, creative people, it's kind of hard to do the same thing over and over. You can always put like a variation of it. All right, so now that I've gotten to that point, I am going to go ahead and add some little freckles. Now with this flower, I'm just using the same color of, of the leaves, the sage green. But if you want to do like brown or another color that you come up with, just feel free to, to do that. I'm just, just kind of speckling it, just taking the paint and putting it on the flower just kind of randomly on top of the leaf. If you like to be more specific and just do polka dots or something like that, you can. I just like to try to kind of randomly do them. Like I said, you can do them in a different color if you wish. And I mean, you can even add some to these if you want. They're not going to show up really well, but they're there. A, a brown contrast probably would be nicer. But again, with this set, I'm just pretty much doing it to show you, you know, how to do it. Not necessarily concerned too much with the colors that I'm using. I mean, like I said, if you want to do the speckling nicer. Feel free, but this is just the basic gist of it, is just putting them on there. And I've done some where I've just done them more like polka dots, heavier towards the, the center of the flower and then get lighter towards the outside of the flower. 
And like I mentioned, you can do a couple in here if you want. They're not going to show up real well because of it being the same color as the flower. But that's okay. You know, they don't have to really stand out too much. Now, what you could do is give this a little bit of time to dry, but since I'm doing the video, I'm just going to move on into the next step. So we continue moving on. Since, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and and do the little stamens that go in the center of the flower. And on these two you can go over them again if you want. You know, if you're dragging through the paint because the paint's wet. That's why I'd recommend probably giving it a little bit more time to dry before you do this part of it. But it's alright. I'm always in a hurry so I tend to paint like this typically. Alright, so make sure you can see. And I am a lefty so whatever direction I'm doing something right now you possibly will start and stop in a different direction that I'm going in. It's whatever you're comfortable with when you're painting. And remember too with painting gl on glass it's so easy if you make a mistake, don't like what you've done, guess what? Just go over to the sink and wash it off. The main thing to keep in mind when you are painting on glass that you need to make sure you clean your glass before you paint on it. I just typically for the most most cases, I just wash mine with soap and water and dry them. Dry them the best that I can. And then, uh, then they should be fine. If you want to wash them off with denatured rubbing alcohol, you can do that. The main thing is just, you just want to get any oil, dirt, that kind of thing off the glass before you before you start painting on it because that will actually help the paint adhere to the glass better. And then when you bake it, just remember you go into an oven cold. You don't go into an oven with the glass with the oven already heated. It has to be cold. If not, you're at risk of the glass breaking because that's what will cause your glass to break is the, the te uh, difference in temperature. And then right now I'm just putting little green petals on the little buds. And again, some of these you probably probably really aren't even going to see too much once we continue on with what I'm going to do next. But I guess I'd just like to know that there I did this part. And you can put in as many as you want, make them thinner, thicker. It just it just really really doesn't matter. No wrong or right way. Like I said, I used to sell a lot of this design. And I'm sure since it's been a while, I'm probably doing it a little bit differently than I did back in the day when I sold them, but that's okay too. Now when you're doing these leaves, these are just going to be pretty much straight, just long, long petals. You know, if you want to be uh, diverse and add different kinds of petals to yours. You know, that's certainly fine. I'm just using this kind of petal throughout the whole design process. Like I said, if you want to add some petals down here, make it as full of petals or as as uh, scarce of petals as you want.
Oops. And I hope you like this design. Like I said, it's it's an easy design to do. If you want to concentrate on which way the light would be coming, you know, you're welcome to do that too. Right now I'm not really paying too much attention to that as far as the reflection of the light and where the, the lighter green should be. It doesn't really matter. up a little bit more there. The reason I like to paint on gloss so much is that it's that the paint flows so easily. Good way to practice. You know, if you're new at painting or wanting to get your own painting style, work on that. Very easy to do. Brush is getting pretty full of paint. Okay. And like I said, this this process is just very relaxing. I often can get carried away with putting too many petals on things, so I have to really try to watch myself. And see where I mentioned, you know, I'm covering up a lot of those, those little petals that I did around, around the uh, flower to begin with. But I kind of like to know that they're there. And in a situation like this, you know, you can go back, add some more leaves, just kind of fill them in. And if you're like me and you like a lot of leaves, then have at it. If you like it to be a little more sparse, that's fine too. It's your project. So always remember that. It's what you want it to be, not what you, somebody else wants you to do. Like I said, and if, if you feel like you want to add more leaves in here, you can. Smaller leaves maybe, longer leaves if you want to make them longer. You want to use different colors want to do a different type of leaf. I mean, you could do these kind and then do some fancier type leaves. If you wanted to maybe throw a leaf in here, yeah, you can do that. You know, just wherever, wherever you feel like it might be sparse. On this, I'm not going to do the, the hand or the uh, stem, but you certainly could do something fancy around the stem. And then maybe even put a little flower bud at the bottom. That would be cute, and I've done that a lot too. But what a nice set. What a nice set this would be as a, as a wedding gift for a bride and a groom. These would be great glasses to drink of, out of during the wedding ceremony. Or not wedding, sorry, wedding ceremony, excuse me. The wedding reception. And then have, have them as keepsakes after the day. You also, on this type of design, you can add some polka dots, maybe some gold polka dots or silver just sporadically throughout. It's just, just a simple pattern, simple, fun, and just makes a pretty gloss to give away as a gift. Something fun to do, maybe with your friends some night, just have them come over, with your favorite wine, and drink out of your painted wine glass. All right, well, I appreciate you stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions, and hopefully I will be able to continue making more videos um, after having a little bit of a, a spot there of not doing them. I miss, I really do miss doing them. So let me know, and I hope to be more active here on my channel. Thanks again. Have a good day.